you you guys help me a lot, Soko Films. You, you watch Soko Films? I do. So, well done, JC. <laughs> and I also watch uh, How to Dash. DCCI. Well done, DCCI. So, you collectively, all of you, inspired me and my family to leave the So, you got death threats in, in Speaker's, this, Corner in Speaker's Corner two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. By multiple Muslims. Yeah. Because now you're an ex-Muslim, we know your face. I've got a uh, brother here. What's your name, brother? Francis. Francis. Can you? Is it big in the home? Yeah, it's big. Um, Francis is a Christian um, from a Muslim background, and we're just going to tell his story and talk about some of his experiences, um, which is just proof positive, something we all know, that the Christian faith is growing, um, despite what Muslims say. There's, there are Muslims becoming Christians. So, um, Francis, just start off. Tell us a little about a, a bit about your life inside Islam. Um, and if it helps you, tell me something good, something bad, and something ugly. Um, well, in if it helps, you okay. don't have to. Sure. So I was I was never a devout Muslim. So, so wasn't my family to be honest with me. Yeah. So we were like praying five times a day, yeah. or fasting every single month, or yeah. Ramadan every single day. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, or celebrating Eid as a lush uh, big Eid. We weren't yeah. ever like that. We were more secular in our ways. So a cultural so, Muslim. So cult yeah, a cultural Muslim. More okay. Likely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I got into Islam. Uh, the what, when when did you get into Islam? Like, so when did you start taking it seriously? I took it seriously back in 2016. Yeah. But I went to mosques. Uh, I, I prayed with a lot of different Muslim, uh, Muslim people. And then the good thing about uh, the whole situation, me being in Islam, was that I obviously you you have a lot of people that you can chat to. A lot of people will welcome you. They'll they'll give you all the praises for getting back into Islam. But but something was de definitely lacking there. The, the, lack, the lack of the lack of a brother, my brother, the the, re the realness. Like they will come up to you face to face and talk to you nicely and everything. But then you can hear them just if you if you can hear them from the other room about joking about you about oh he's gonna turn away he's gonna do this he's gonna do this he's not gonna, he's not gonna be the So so what you're saying you heard other Muslims. Doubt whether your oh, yeah. dean was strong. Of course. Why, why were they doubting whether your dean was strong? Uh, because I wasn't, I wasn't ready uh, to dress up like them. Okay. I was like, my dress does not represent uh, what I need to do. Yeah. It should not. That's what. Uh, so I was like, whatever my dress is, I can wear whatever I want to. If God wants to accept some prayer, He will accept my prayer. If He doesn't want to, He wouldn't. Yeah. It's His choice. Mm. Who are you as a human being to tell me what I, what I can wear? And what I cannot wear? I can't have piercing, I can't have this, I can't have that. So you were chafing against all the rules of, of Islam? Course, yeah. And because you were pushing back yeah. against this peer pressure yeah. to Islamicize and Arabize, yeah. you, uh, you, 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 people were doubting whether you were of course. committed. Then I was ostracized by seven different mosques. Wow, yeah. right. So, so uh, no one would talk to me. Right. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't come to this mosque anymore, we don't want you here. What, 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 give, me, give me some examples of what kind of... Give me one example of a discussion that led to you being ostracized from models. Okay, so I went to an imam in front of everybody. Yeah. So the imam was preaching about, oh, look what, look what these people are doing, look what these people are doing. I'm like, but I went up. So I was sitting in the second row, you know, like there's a rose on the prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the second prayer man. I just stood my hand up. I was like, I've got a question here. I was like, speak, child. Like, I don't know, like, he was some sort of, uh, I don't know, God, yeah. God being or something, he th yeah. th 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 thought of himself as a big man. Well, I've got a question. You're saying all these, all these kuffar. Some of these kuffar are really good friends of mine. Yeah. Some of these people are amazing, beautiful, loving people. They've got nothing against us. I've been to a church, I've, I've, I've just, to, just to see how it, how it is. I've uh, been to a synagogue. They never preach anything against anyone. Why would you? You, you infidel and all these like shouting started happening and that was it. Get out of this mosque. Simply no. because you questioned the question. language of kuffar and yeah. the language of, well, hate speech against Christians and Jews. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't know what these people are like and stuff like that. I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't reply back. I couldn't say anything back. I, I was, I was picked up and I was told to get out of this mosque. That was it. Right. Okay. And same, so these were like seven different instances. 
that's yeah. happened. And I always yeah. question because I was like, no, no, no. It's, if Islam is so, it's, if Islam is so tolerant, you should question these sort of things. Yeah. Then I am there to question you. If I'm going to be a sheep and ask you nothing, yeah. like everyone else, just just literally listening to you and not even not, not even contemplating the fact that maybe he's wrong. Yeah. Maybe he's saying something stupid, but no, they they wouldn't question that. They were like, everyone's like, all ears, we got no lips. No, yeah. I, I wasn't like that. So this is how it all started. And then and then I was like, maybe this religion is not that tolerant as I thought it might be. Mm. That changed. Did that mean you, that you left Islam at that point? What was it that made you leave Islam? So what made me leave Islam? So I was uh, so I was listening to a lot of other people. So I, I started debating with a lot of Muslims. I was like, I don't like what they're saying. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't like the fact that the, uh, they are happy with the fact that uh, Muhammad married a six-year-old girl. Yeah. In this society, or even in that society, a father would never ever give his daughter away. Yeah. Like that. That that sickened me to that. And then the second thing I got to realize was, and I never knew these facts before. Then, uh, where did you learn these facts? So I learned these through talking to other uh, other Islamist people. Okay. Yeah. So other people who preach Islam. So yeah. I, I I started conversa uh, conversating with them. Okay. Going into the offices. And then they would say something. That yeah, would say something, and uh, that would give resonate. you more information. Yeah. And, yeah. and I wouldn't resonate with that. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be part of this thing. No. Yeah. My biggest concern was a woman's a woman's got half a brain than a man. I like, I've got a I've got I've got a couple of women in my life. That's yeah. my mother. You're talking about my sister. You're talking about. Yeah. So she's not. She's not worth. Keep talking. Yeah. So like, it wasn't. Thank you. Keep it, it wasn't. It wasn't worth anything whatsoever. Yeah. Something. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be into this. Yeah. And this is where I decided. You know what? I need to get into this more and just to realize how sickening this religion can be. Yeah. Then learning about the hadiths of um, like the Muhammad saying, oh, uh, if a man gives his his private parts. His male genitalia and um, his tongue to me, I'll grant him paradise. You got, do, do you'd have to give us a reference to that, do you oh, remember? Oh, yeah. yeah sure. but find it out for in a second. I want to sure. find it out in a second. I want to press on with the discussion, but sure. I'd like you to get that so that we can put it on screen. Sure. So you, you found out more about these things, and, and this led you to conclude that you didn't want to be a Muslim? No. I was like, no, never. It I, didn't lead you to conclude? No, no, no. It did. Uh, it didn't. Uh, it, it completely led me to just leave Islam. I was like, no, okay. I'm not gonna be into this. Into so this re culture. reading the hadiths made you leave Islam. A lot. Right. And then Quran. Uh, then I, after leaving Islam, I was like, okay, I'm gonna read Quran. It's a, a, as a claim that it's a word of word of God. Uh, also, oh, sorry to sorry to, uh, sorry to uh, backtrack here, but also David Ward, watching David Ward's video. Yeah. Uh, Act Apologetic 17. Yeah. That helped me a lot. Well done, uh, David Wood. Uh, you you guys helped me a lot. Soko films. You you watch Soko films? I do. So well done, JC. <laughs> and I also watch uh, How to Dash. DCCI well done, DCCI. DCCI. So you collectively, all of you, inspired me and my family to leave Islam. Yeah. yeah. And I, I I can't thank you enough for it. Honestly, I would I, I would literally give a lot of uh, a lot of praises, and I could give as much as I possibly can to you guys. You see, for us, favor. we don't want we don't want praise. For people leaving Islam. No, no, honest. you don't want praise for. No, 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 no. It's all right. Don't worry. I'm not. This isn't a combative statement, so you don't feel you need to respond. Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you. But just, just to be clear about what motivates us, it's not getting people to leave Islam. Yeah. It's about people coming to Christ. Now, there was. Um, how, how long was there between you leaving, saying, right, I'm not a Muslim anymore, okay. to becoming a Christian? How long was that gap? So it was nearly a year. So it was about a year. What was your life like, ex-Muslim, but not Christian? What, what, what was that like? So it, uh, it was me searching a lot of different religions. It was me trying to search something something much more true than Islam. Yeah. It was me searching about uh, Judaism. Judaism, yeah. Uh, Christianity. Christianity, yeah. Um, and these were, because I know these are the original books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what Islam teaches. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I need to concentrate on these two religions and see what what, what I what I can easily understand more. Yeah. But then uh, the best thing was I met an amazing person, just random, random walking down the streets in London. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and this amazing lady who said, uh, God will turn your life. Mm. And God that I'm talking about is Jesus Christ. She gave you a prophetic word. Jeez, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and, it, it, and then I started, I started reading about more about, about Jesus. Yeah. Unlearning. Now, 
also during this uh, during this whole year unlearning everything about Islam, uh -huh. just getting getting it out of my mind as much as possible because it, it's it, because still to this day sometimes it's you know when you, when you read about when you read Bible or when you start yeah. reading gospel yeah this Islam infiltrates you because it injects injected it you need to throw that gunk out of you yeah that's one thing you definitely need to do I I recommend every other expert to do such a thing yeah it's to change the way you think exactly because as, it, as it says in Romans 12. You know, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the light of God's mercy, to offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice to the Lord our God, which is your act of worship as a sensible people, and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's that renewing of your mind that yeah. I guess you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't easy. So started going to a few churches. Uh huh. Uh, started, started sitting into uh, Sunday masses. Yeah. Started talking with different uh, different people. Uh, different Christians. Yeah. Uh, majority of the Christians that I've spoken to do not know much about Christianity. Mm. They were they were about more like okay we go to church on Sunday. Uh, Sunday around. Sunday Sunday Club Christians. Sunday Club Christians, yeah. Sunday Club Christians. Uh, we don't yeah. we don't particularly uh, sit down on bed every night and pray to Jesus. That's yeah they were like that. So I was like okay but at least the few facts the good few good things you could tell me about Jesus about Jesus Christ. They couldn't really yeah. Which was which was surprising. I was like, you know, you don't know much about Christianity yourself. What's this all about? Sounds like a lot of the Church of England. Oh yeah, yeah. Church of England, yes. So, but then my, my then few of my experiences were all about going to church, just trying to ask questions. But sometimes, sometimes they're going back. Yeah. And never coming back, and I'm like, uh, who do I ask questions there? So it was just me trying to soul search, but I wasn't getting anywhere. Yeah. But then my biggest experience was Christianity, which was which didn't put me off. I, I would swear it didn't put me off Christianity whatsoever. But it was in Lincoln. Uh, I don't know which church it was. Yeah. I went to. Uh, I, I explained to them that I'm an expert. Uh, I believe in Jesus. I've not been baptized. Um, I don't know much about Christianity. And they literally told me they don't want this fuss. Just get out of there. We don't want this. What, what, what fuss were they talking about? Like they don't want. They want. They don't want an expert them. They don't. They, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't want an explosive coming into their church, and uh, have them. They were. They were more. They were more. How can I say? It sounded more like the way he was talking is that they want to protect themselves. They don't want to get into scrutiny by Muslims. But what was it? What was it that you were saying or doing that said to them, "We don't want you here"? No, no. no I just. I just explained. I spoke to the. I spoke to the guy. Yeah. Uh, who was wearing uh, his uniform, and I spoke to him. And that was. Uh, I just explained to him. Okay. I'm a. Uh, I'm a new Christian. I'm an explosive. Yeah. So I don't know much about Christianity. Would you help me with these certain things and uh, about tell me about baptism? Tell me about uh, what do I need to read? How should I get myself st starting off yeah. into all these things? Yeah. I couldn't get any. Uh, I couldn't get any response. Just the response. I I, I I find that hard to believe that that alone was the reason why they asked you to leave. Possibly. I I yeah. I, I find that hard to believe. I can understand I, I still that. Don't to believe that. It, it's it's because. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if, in discussing Islam, you might have made comments that were politically incorrect. Maybe, because my, I'm not. I'm not very politically correct. So I'm like, uh, uh, I just want to get. So my language is more like, I'm, I'm an ex-Muslim. I can't stand Muslims. They say, they say they're completely against uh, this religion. They're this, they're this, and they're this. I was, like, more than, I was unapologetic completely. That I was like, okay, these Muslims, they're, they're absolutely. If you say things like that, now I can I, I can believe that a fellowship may ask you to leave if you say things like that. Okay. You know. But and just saying, you know, teach me about that baptism, I don't find that a belief. I don't think that that's yeah. something that they would kick you out well, for. So I'm just wondering if there were other kind of conversations that you had. Yeah. You know. That, that, there were always some sort of conversations going on, like I did I did specifically mention the Okay, this is what Islam teaches. The sickening ideology, that sickening culture of power of that's I'm not I'm not interested in that. Yeah. But you can't speak about other religions like this. I'm like I can because you don't know what they speak to you speak like this about about you guys. Do you know every single prayer that we do, every single Friday prayer that it happens in the mosque, what sort of abuse that you guys get every single Friday? Yeah. Through 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 the times of Muhammad, do you not read the Quran? Do does it not state that uh Jews and Christians are your enemy? 
the infidels. Oh, no, kill them where you find them. Yeah. These sort of things do you not read or these sort of, No, we don't get into these sort of arguments. We, we we can't we can't stand these sort of things. It's just like no, we can't have someone like this. Yeah. No, I'm like, but this is this is my truth. Yeah. I'm telling you the reality. I'm not fabricating everything. This is all in Quran. Yeah. This is all in, uh, this is all uh, all the teaching of Muhammad. I'm not I'm not making this up. It's like it's like you're telling me that I'm saying this on my on my own on, on my own personal basis. No, I'm saying that it's actually happening. And, and, and there's, there's a couple of thoughts that emerge from this. Firstly, is that I, I counsel Christians again and again and again about the importance of, of making distinctions. And I, I counsel you as well of making a distinction about Muslims and about Islam. You know, like, and not equating the two as if they're the same. Because you yourself were, were only a cultural Muslim. Yeah. You didn't have any of those hateful attitudes. And it, no. it was the absence of those hateful attitudes that got kicked you out of mosques. Yeah. But then, because you're an ex-Muslim, and, like, there is this tendency amongst ex-Muslims ex to have, like, a... In some cases, a bitter tone towards the Muslim community that you can... And also, this is true of those that want to resist Islam generally that they use language which is clumsy. Yeah. Which I've even heard you use in this interview, this idea of, you know, like, you, you spoke about Muslims as if they're just one mass, you know. And, and, and that's the kind of language that defeats us all the time. But what I find ultimately shocking is that a, a Christian fellowship um, asked you to leave because they didn't want to deal with the, the, the challenge that Islam presents and the challenge that an ex-Muslim brings to their fellowship by presenting what Islam teaches to them. Yeah. You know? And I think I think that this is a, a terrible problem that we face in the church. You know? And 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 not rallying behind ex-Muslims, but seeing ex-Muslims who sort of bring with them baggage um, and, and, and express that baggage um, for good and for bad isn't Christian just kicking them out isn't Christian just saying sorry we don't want that controversy here yeah isn't Christian and it and it tells me it wouldn't surprise me if the church that you went to was some kind of progressive church you know oh, no, they, 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 they did teach about uh, pray the evil away so I'm like okay how do you counter that evil you there's something called fight back the evil yeah God's gonna give you the strength to fight the evil yeah it's not gonna oh you just pray say it and someone's stabbing you from the back you're still praying what, what, what world do you live in? Yeah. Do you, do you need some, as, as, as you said, we need a muscular Christianity. Yeah. We need some sort of a, uh, we, need, we need to have a mindset that not, God is there to give us the strength. God is there to give us, give us the help we need. But we need to stand up and do something about it too. Amen. Yep. But so what we, was it, no, sorry, I just, I just want to return to the sure. story because I agree with you and I think everyone who watches this will know that whole discussion. But but what was it then that finally brought you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because you went to a church, you had some yeah. bad experiences. Um, why then did you decide, right, I'm, I'm going to become a Christian? So I, so still to this day, I'm not baptized. Fair enough. So some people might say that I'm not Christian yet. Yeah. Uh, I've been told that from a few, a few people around, but yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. fair play. So I'll get baptized, fine. But then what made me become Christian is that when I when I, when I read Jesus all about love and, and the way he will turn your life around, I wouldn't even expect And this happened to me, I'm a living proof. Yeah. My love, my life was here. At the low, I was at the lowest point ever. Suicidal, depression, completely anxious about ever going anywhere. Built, built up, uh, just, just got really hard. Yeah. Because obviously not being able to do anything, not, not have that, not have that yeah. So I accepted like, okay, God is all about love. God is all about beauty around you. Look at the nature around you. Look at yourself. You're the, like creating you. Yeah. Well, there's so many billions and billions of people out there. Yeah. Who do not have the faith, but but they're still living. But at the end of the day, if they had Jesus in life, how, how much happier would they be? Yeah. So the love, the peace. Uh, his, his strength and his uh, him getting all that cross for us. Yeah. It was, it was, it was really it was, a, it was a, it was a game changer. And that's few bits and uh, reading all that. And that was it. I slept the most peaceful. Uh, I slept the most peaceful sleep I can at the night that I became a Christian. Thanks. On my own. Yeah. 
I didn't have anyone telling me how to become a Christian. I don't. I, don't, I didn't have anyone telling me how to pray. Yeah. How to live my life. Yeah. What do I need to do as a Christian now? Nobody was telling me this. I was just going online and reading everything or watching all the all you guys' videos. That was yeah. it. That was that was me being tough. But obviously, but it, it was it was just a surreal sort of thing. It it felt it felt good, and then my life just started building back. Started going to the gym. Started started becoming active, doing things for myself. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, now I uh, thankfully I've got a, I'm in a partnership. Thanks, Peter. Good. Yeah. So th th this is the sort of thing. So what 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 since since becoming a Christian, how how did your family respond? Uh, what happened with your family? No, my family, all of us turned Christian together. All of you. Yeah. On the same night. On the same night. Thank you. Now, so how many people is that? So it's four. Yeah. Uh, one's non-verbal, so of course he does not know anything. Or he doesn't have a concept of God. Yeah. Or he's autistic. Yeah. So a low function, which is like not high function yeah. fully. Yeah. So he obviously we, we can't say anything for him. Yeah. But obviously we can just say God, we may Jesus bless him. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. yeah but, but yeah, all of us together, three. Uh, so we are four. Right. So, uh, I've got a younger brother, non-verbal, autistic, and I've got an elder sister, my mother. Wow. So that's wonderful. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. And what 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 have since becoming a, a Christian? What have been some of your experiences in terms of, like, you know, finding a church? How Muslims have responded when they found out that you left Islam, well, that you left Islam, um, and that now you're a Christian? Well, how, how, tell me about some of those experiences. So two years ago, when I became an ex-Muslim, yeah. I used to come to Speakers Corner before. Uh, the biggest amount of death threats that I got in this place. And that's what made me stop coming into this place. So you got death threats in, in, speaker's, in, corner in speaker's Corner two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. By multiple Muslims. Yeah. Because now you're an ex-Muslim, we know your face. Yeah. Like we'll find you, we'll hunt you, we'll know, we know London. Yeah. This is this is our this is our guard, as they what they say. Guard means area. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry, but uh, just because I'm an ex-Muslim, just because I don't believe in your guard means that you'd have you have the right to take my life away because it actually gives you heaven yeah they couldn't respond to anything they just they, they, they all all they were blabbering about was just about to kill him to yeah. just get, get rid of me kill this infidel that right. was it that, maybe they'll give them heaven and and, and we've seen and we've, we we we've caught it many a time it on video oh yeah you know thug islam intimidation acts of aggression and violence i mean there'll be a fight probably this week of course um there's a fight nearly every week in Speaker's Corner. Yeah. We've had someone try to kill someone, yeah. you know, um, in Speaker's Corner. It, it is a thing. It yeah. is a thing that progressive Christians, liberal do-gooder Christians, the lily-livered middle class, yeah. they, they, none of them want to face up to it, no. you know. But, but we must. Exactly. We must and we must continue to speak the truth of it until people hear it. And that's why I'm back in Speaker's Corner now. I am back for the very particular reason that I want to say, I want to show muscular Christianity. I'll face up to these sort of things and say, okay, before that, because my because I didn't have faith, yeah, because I wasn't a Christian then. Yeah, that's when I started getting death threats. Yeah, now I've turned to Christianity. Now I've learned a lot. Okay, Jesus said, no, you need to be. I need to be strong. Yeah. in order to in order to believe in my uh, in order to believe, I have my faith and believe in Jesus Christ. I need to face up to these people and say, okay, I'm here. I want to I want to I want to give you some some tips and advice as an elder brother to a younger brother in the sure. faith. Firstly, I would encourage you to be baptized as soon as you possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a maxim in discipleship that you need to hear, which is accept that which you can when you're ready to accept it. Okay? So if people say to you do X or do Y or do Z, don't do it because they tell you. Don't do it because they try to put pressure on you. Listen to what they say, assess it, make your own mind up about it, yeah. and if you agree, then accept it. And I, I, I want to encourage you that at the earliest opportunity, like as in when you're emotionally and psychologically ready to do it, you, you take baptism. Yeah. Because baptism is the moment when our personal spirituality becomes public before the church yeah. and is recognized before the communion. And, and when we make that public profession and that solemn vow that we intend to be a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of our life. The, the, the next thing that I want to encourage you to do is to find a good church. Now, we spoke off camera what a good church looks like. Yeah. 
just for the sake of anyone else who may be in a similar position, I'm just going to reiterate what those things are. It's good, just as a recap for you as well. Which is, find a church that takes prayer seriously, that is devoted to prayer. Now, when you're devoted to something, it means that you're willing to sacrifice time, energy, and resource for the thing you're devoted to. Like you're devoted to your younger sibling, like you're devoted to your mother. Well, be devoted to prayer, find a church that is devoted to prayer. Be devoted to the apostolic and prophetic teaching and find a church that is devoted to the apostolic and prophetic teaching. Find a, a church that is devoted to the sacraments um, and, and, and be devoted to the sacraments yourself. And, and that's another reason to get baptized because that's one of those sacraments. And then find a church that is devoted to the fellowship of the believers. So they're devoted to one another. And I want to encourage you to do that, you know. Now, because you're talking about coming here as a Christian and you've announced that you're going to come here now as a Christian, you're, you're going to be targeted. Of course. People, there, there are going to be some Muslims that come up to you now and they're going to try and harass you. They already have. Okay. There's going to be other Muslims that come up to you and they're going to be the good cop. Of course. They're going to be like your best buddy pal. They want to, they want to befriend you. Yes. I want to emphasize as a Christian, and I say this to all Christians that come to this corner, don't get isolated. No. Don't get isolated. I know like, what, why, I do, why not to get isolated. Yeah. I know Con connect with the Christians yes. in the corner. And the other thing is, don't feel pressured to answer questions you can't answer. You're a new Christian. Yes. You're not expected to know anything. And if there's someone puts a camera in your face and asks you a question that you don't feel confident in answering, just own it and say, look, I'm a new Christian. Yeah. I don't know the answer, but I'll take you to Bob or I'll take you to <laughs> Hatun and let's see if you'll, you'll ask that question to them and see what they've got to say about it. So, so use that, that kind of facility, that kind of reality, yeah. you know, and, and like I say, get yourself embedded in the Christian community as deeply and as quickly as you're ready to do so. Yeah, because I've, I've lost a lot of friends. Yeah. As soon as I became a Christian, I've lost a lot of friends. Yeah. Oh, you're going there now. Yeah. And this is by this my normal friends who are not, who are not religious at all. Yeah. Or they, it doesn't matter whether they're black, white or brown. Uh, I, I've been I've been isolated by yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, oh, now you're doing this. Oh, oh, you're going to these sort of places now. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm completely isolated. So I need a lot of Christian friends. <laughs> honest, honestly speaking. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm getting. There. I'm yeah. Making, I'm making a lot. Of, I'm trying to make Christian friends, especially coming here. It's a little social activity. Well, the, don't, to don't learn as well. I, I, I want to counsel you that that coming here to make friends ain't no, the no, best no, way. No, 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 not friends. Like, like learning. The learning, yes. Yeah. And, Come here to learn. Yeah, of course. Don't come here thinking that you're going to make great oh, friends. No, no, no. It isn't the place for that. I know. What, what I would encourage you to do is to, to, to maybe spend a year just listening. Of course, that's what I'm doing. Just taking notes, yeah. just just ad observing, you know, the Christians that are more regular, more established, and, and, and don't feel obliged to, to defend. All you can do is give your testimony, Yeah. you know? And, and Muslims will throw the same tropes at you, you know, can you recite the Fatiha? Can you, yeah. can you recite Arabic? Yes. You know, but you've already said that you were a cultural Muslim. Yes. And we said that you were from a Muslim background. We never said that you were some devout Muslim. Exactly. You know, so the fact that you might have forgotten or maybe don't know Fatiha, and I don't know if you do or you don't, are you able to recite the Fatiha? I am. Can you do it on camera now? Sure. Uh, on, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Amitim. He, he was he was saying that whilst looking in my eyes. So like you know, but Muslims will never be satisfied because no. the Muslims in the park, when you say it, they'll they'll say, Oh, can you say the Fatiha? You've just recited the Fatiha on camera, yeah. but now they'll say they'll change the goalposts. Of course. And and I love Muslims that deny the fact that that Muslims are becoming Christians. Of course. Because they make my job easy. Like, I love those Muslims. Like Ali Dawa says. Like Ali Dawa. Yeah. Uh, okay. When, when the Islamic Caliphate take over, the, uh, take over this country, uh, with the capital punishment, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be put on them. Yeah. And we are proud of that. Yeah, and they're proud of that. So so the thing is, people like the, people like the Islamists in the park yeah. want death upon you. Of course. And I want to challenge every libtard, every progressive, every liberal do-gooder Christian do you think that it is fair that there are people that would seek to seek the death of our brother in Christ? And if you agree with me that that is an injustice, then you should stand with people like me to defend this brother 
against the Islamists that would seek his life. Whether they are like Ali Dawa and they want to do it through legal transformation, or whether they're like the Islamists who, who are suspected of attacking Hatun Tash uh, three weeks ago. The reality is, as Christians, we need to wake up to the challenge that we face. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. What, what's your name? Francis. Francis. Thank you, brother Francis. Nice, it's beautiful to hear your story. Thank you so much. It's going to be an encouragement. And I, what would you, what, as a final thing, what would you say to any sincere Muslim? Because there are sincere Muslims. There's yeah. lots of sincere Muslims who are seeking the truth that aren't, they don't like yourself. Their heart is not filled with hatred. But, and they're genuinely considering the Christian faith. They're actually thinking, you know, is Christianity true? Should I become a Christian? What, what would you say to those people? I would say um, learn, learn about Quran and learn about uh, Hadith yourself. Do your own research. Do not go to these people, uh, like these mullahs or the Islamic preachers. Do not go to them because they're going to fabricate it for you. They will make sure that you stay in this religion. And if you have any doubts, you're going to be targeted simple as that. You'll be ostracized by the, uh, by the community, or you'll be thrown out of the mosque, or you'll be, uh, or something bad is, is going to happen. So do your own research. What else? Do your own research. Learn about Christianity. Learn about Jesus Christ. Learn about the real God of love. Learn about the, uh, the peace-loving God, as Jesus Christ. Learn about learn about how, how devout He is to His beings. As Allah said, He's the best of the deceivers. Yeah. That, that gives me more doubt than anything, but at the end of the day, Satan is the best of the series. The king Carol of lies, yep. Yeah. The father of lies. Yep. Yeah. Iblis, as in Arabic. Yeah. And then also the biggest thing is learn that you have to constantly live your life. And someone has to tell you how to dress, how, how to eat, how to even go to the toilet. That does, not, that does not make sense. As a normal person, you wouldn't do all these sort of things. It does not... I, I laugh at these things when I when, when I see myself. Yeah. For 28 damn years of my life, sickens me to call. Oh, what was I into? What, what was my life like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I laugh at myself now. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, you found the truth. Exactly. And God willing, your testimony will help other people to find that truth as well. I want to reiterate. I encourage every Muslim to pick up the Injil and read it for yourself, exactly. and to to learn about. Muhammad's actions without the filter of the Islamic ulama and exactly. the apologists but to just look as the, the rest of the world does and just see the kind of horrendous and stupid things yeah. that you're invited to do like breast breastfeeding adults yeah. so that they can be in your company or uh, yeah yeah so if you uh, so you have to so a woman can breastfeed a man well I don't know how many times yeah but then she can become a madam madam is someone like a uh, brother like yeah so she can be she can be left alone with that man. Yeah. For the way for the for the main purposes. Like maybe uh maybe yeah, like in the house together. In the house yeah, together yeah, or yeah. Something. Because because they're their family. That's the thing, yeah. isn't it? And then uh, do not fall for the art of refabrication or redepredation. No, no, no. Yeah. Do not fall for that. What you read is what it says. Yeah. Thanks if somebody if somebody tells you anything else, don't. And and I would encourage them the same those same guys to pick up the Bible yeah. and to learn about Jesus Christ. Exactly. I rejected Islam and accepted Christianity for the exact same reasons that you did. I saw in Christ this pure example of love, this countenance of mercy, this light to the world, and I saw in Muhammad a murderer, a rapist, a pedophile, and yeah. um, a thief, thief. Uh, a warlord, Seven a caravan country, robber. Caravan. And it's kind of like, well, you know, who do I want to follow? Exactly. And genuinely, that is the reason why I became a Christian and well, not a Muslim, because, you know, they were inviting me. Well, let's not forget the, uh, the sperm saints that Aisha used to clean on his clothes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know how old she was, but probably exactly, too young. Exactly. Anyway, peace Thank be with you, bro. You. Thank you so much. Listen to that advice. Go get yourself into a good fellowship. Hopefully. Thank get yourself you so baptized. And then when you're baptized, come back and tell us and celebrate with us. Or, and, and, and stick close to the Christians here. Uh, and don't feel under any pressure to, to answer questions you can't answer to. All right, God bless. Take care.